Okay, so in this video, we are taking a look at the Apple iPad 9. We will be talking about whether this iPad here is still relevant in 2023 and whether you should go ahead and consider buying this guy here. Let's go ahead and jump in. First things first, the answer to the question is simply yes and yes. Yes, it's still relevant in 2023. And yes, you should consider buying this guy here if you happen to be in the market for an iPad specifically. I know a lot of people are out there looking or considering picking up the Apple iPad 10. I've actually made a versus video where I was pitting the iPad 10 against the iPad 9 here and I was still encouraging people to pick up this guy if they don't mind the old legacy look, right? This, like many Apple devices, is said to be supported for at least five major updates, right? So that means at least five years. And of course, even after five years, you can still use your device and have no issues. And if you are new to the channel, keep in mind that this channel leans more towards recommending things that would offer you, you know, the best bang for your buck, as opposed to just telling you go buy, you know, the latest and greatest, right? So it all depends on what you are looking for. Feel free to toss a comment in the comment section if you have a specific question, maybe you're in the market trying to buy one and you're not sure whether it's a good deal. But anyways, going back to the tablet here. So beyond the old legacy look that you have here, so the front of the tablet, it looks just like the iPad 8, but the inside is what counts, right? So if all of that can help you accomplish what you are looking for, then, you know, why should you care what it looks like on the front? Now, I'm not gonna do a deep dive into the specs of this guy here, but to those not familiar with what the tablet has to offer, let's just quickly go over it, right? So the front display here is a 10.2 inches IPS display, right? So you have kind of that mid-range level of display here. Very, very nice. The resolution here is 1620 by 2160. And I can tell you that image quality is is actually pretty sharp. The only downside when it comes down to the display, well, at least personally for me, is the aspect ratio, right? So when you're watching a movie, you have like these larger bars as opposed to something that has more of a wider aspect ratio, right? So here you have an aspect ratio of four by three, I believe, as opposed to something like on any of the Samsung Galaxy tablets, as a matter of fact, do have those wide displays. But anyway, so either way, it's still good for entertainment, whether you're watching a movie, you know, playing games and all that good stuff. Now, the next thing to keep in mind here is that this is not a laminated display. Now, to a lot of newcomers, people who are new to, you know, the tablet world, it won't mean a thing, but if you've already used other tablets before, especially tablets that have a laminated display, this might bother you. So to those of you who don't know, the whether it's laminated refers to the gap that you have between the front part of the display here and the actual display underneath it. So you do have a gap going around there and that's what we call, you know, a non-laminated display. So some people like myself, I'm not a big fan of it. You know, sure, it makes it so that if you were to smash it, you know, if you the display were to get damaged, it will be cheaper for you to replace because all you have to do is simply buy a new display and pop this part off and then, you know, have the new display, you know, just sit right there. That's the good part of it. But again, when it comes down to just user experience, it may actually affect your user experience. Now, let's talk about some of the physical features that you have here. You have your power button, volume rocker, of course, as always. The good thing is that with something like this, you still do have a headphone jack. At the bottom of the tablet here, you have your two speakers, stereo speakers here. They sound decent. The only problem is that you don't have speakers on the other side to kind of balance that out, right? So if you have large hands like myself and you hold it like this, you will be covering the sound or the sound will be coming out muffled. So next here, let's quickly cover cameras. On the back here, what you have is an eight megapixel camera. It's not, you know, the best camera in the world, but it's there if you need to, you know, scan documents. On the front, however, you have a actual modern level camera. You have a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera there. And that particular camera supports center stage, right? That's the option or the feature where you can be in video call and you can move around the camera with automatically adjust to make sure that you stay within the frame. You can find out more about that on some of the videos that I've made or if you, even if you were to just go on the Apple website, you should be able to find more information on that. So it has the same camera as all of the newer, you know, iPads, right, including the new iPad Pro. Even though it still has the old look, when it comes down to specs, it's still up there, including the new camera. And on the front here, you do have a physical fingerprint sensor. This is Touch ID. It's very, very good. It's super quick and, of course, very, very accurate and secure. Now, let's go ahead and move to the inside here. This is loaded with 64 gigs of internal storage. That's the base model. That's what I have here. 64 gigs of internal storage and 3 gigs of RAM. Now, I got to tell you, 64 gigs nowadays could barely cut it, right? Depending on what you do with your tablet. 
obviously if you're not loading your tablet with videos and pictures and things like that, you you know, you can manage, right? But if you're the type you're gonna be taking, you're gonna be, I don't know, transferring large files and playing with it, especially given that this is loaded with an 813 Bionic chip, which is a fairly powerful chipset, especially for a, you know, a budget tablet. In fact, that chipset is so powerful that in terms of raw power, you know, performance, when we're talking raw power, this guy actually competes against some Android mid-range to possibly productivity tablet, right? That's just to tell you how good the A13 Bionic chip is. But anyway, so because you have a powerful chipset in there, it may prompt you to transfer maybe large files that you're gonna be processing or working with, and then you might find yourself running out of space, right? So 64 gigs, if you can go for 256 gigs, it's a good mid-range tablet. So again, as I mentioned, performance, very good if you are playing games with it, you'll be just fine, right? It plays games at high level. It actually plays heavy games pretty well. When it comes down to video editing, I've done some level of video editing here. GPU performance here is actually pretty impressive for what it has to offer, especially given now, given that now the price has dropped to, I've seen it somewhere for 269, and I think that still is a good price, which then of course goes back to the question, right? Is this still relevant in 2023? It, very much, very much is, right? This is still a tablet. This is a tablet that's gonna be around for a while. If you were to purchase this, you guarantee, you know, support for another, I'm thinking another four years. Let's go ahead and talk battery here. It does have a fairly large battery, so it does last the entire day without any issues. I haven't had any issues with the battery, but of course that's gonna depend on the way you use your tablet. You know, you are likely to see a day, even if you're a power user, you could definitely squeeze a day out of your battery here. Next here is gonna be the support for the Apple Pencil first generation. This tablet here does support the Apple first generation. So you can use that to take down notes, draw, and all of that good stuff without any issues. Personally, I'm not a big fan of Apple Pencils because you know they do have those plastic tips. It has that tapping sound that I absolutely hate. It just starts irritating me anytime you know I'm taking down notes. But that's just me. You know, there are people who swear by the Apple Pencil, you know, whether we're talking first or second gen. But anyway, so this is compatible with that and it works fairly well. All of the core functions you know, work without any issues. But again, because you do have a non-laminated display here, there is that latent, that very noticeable latency as you write, right? You can kind of see a little bit of a drag, but that's fine, of course. Really expect it if you are paying 260, 270 bucks for a tablet, you know, that offers the type of performance that the A13 Bionic chip is offering here. So I would say there shouldn't be any complaints there. But anyway, if you need a deeper dive into this tablet here, make sure to check out the videos that I've made on this. I've made a bunch of videos on this particular tablet. So with that said, let me go ahead and just loop back to the original question. Is this relevant in 2023? Absolutely, yes. If you are in the market for a budget iPad specifically, if you're asking, you know, if you're saying I'm in the market for a budget tablet, that's a completely different question. But if you are in the market for a budget iPad, this is the one you should go for, not the iPad 10. I highly recommend that you go for the iPad 9. Again, it all depends on what you're looking for, so make sure to put down in the comment section your question, and I'll try to get to it. If I don't, some people are gonna get to your question. I'm certainly hoping that this was informative. Let me know in the comment section with your questions. Make sure to share the video. Make sure to subscribe, like the video. I will catch you in the comment section. I'm also gonna catch you in the next video. Up until that next video, of course, as always, stay safe out there.